Such a bum, I can't hear you. Hare Krishna Mataji, we can't hear you, Mataji. No, Mataji. Can you log off and log in again otherwise? <laughs> Yeah, sound is coming, but uh, can, can you hear her, Srimati? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj. Even I, can. I can't either. Play around with your your dials there and see what's wrong. Yeah. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance to Salvas to share Prabhupada. Um, shall I share the screen? And, um, but yeah, we can be, begin. Yeah, so you're going to take a log off and log in. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You're going to take over the hosting? Yes, Guru Maharaj, she'll join anyway. Um, I think she'll continue. But uh, for the time being, I'll just uh, share the screen, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, six, verse 64. Continue in the process of devotional service. Jaya Jaya, Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai, Gaur Bhakti Rinda, Stradaram Jana Hoya, Bhakti Arikari, Uttama Madhya Mankanista, Shraddha Anusari. Translation, a faithful devotee is a truly eligible candidate for the loving service of the Lord. According to one's faith, one is classified as a topmost devotee, an intermediate devotee, or an inferior devotee. Mm -hmm. Report. The word Shradavan, faithful, means understanding Krishna to be the Sunam Bonam, the eternal truth and absolute transcendence. If one has full faith in Krishna and confidence in him, one becomes eligible to discharge devotional service according, confidentially. According to one's faith, one is topmost, intermediate, or inferior devotee. Uh, go to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse number 3. Asradhanam Purusha Dharmasya Shya Parantava those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of devotional service. Srila Prabhupada's purport is a little long, but it kind of illustrates what the first verse was saying. The faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. This is the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from a great personality, still have no faith in God. They are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is the most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. In the Chaitanya Chari Tamrita, it is said that faith is the complete conviction by, that by simply serving the Supreme Lord, 
Sri Krishna, one can achieve all perfection. That is called real faith. Prabhupada quotes this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Yatan Tarom Mula Nishesh Chene Nam, Vidyamti Taskanda Bujopasaka, Varopara Ratsha the Yendriyanam, the Tai Vasarva Hanamachuta Teja. By giving water, to the root of the tree, one satisfies its branches, tree, twigs, and leaves. And by supplying food to the stomach, one satisfies all the senses of the body. Simply by engaging in transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord, one automatically satisfies all the demigods and all living entities. Therefore, after reading Bhagavad Gita, one should promptly come to the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita one should give up all other engagement and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead. If one is convinced of this philosophy of life, that is faith. Okay, so before we get into the different, different divisions of faith, we here we see that the essential principle is to engage in devotional service to the Lord. And to have that understanding means to understand that everything is accomplished through devotional service. In other words, the Lord is satisfied, we can become satisfied, the higher beings become satisfied, all living entities become satisfied when one engages in devotional service. If one is convinced of this, and that conviction in order to be achieved has to be applied in a practical way along with understanding our relationship with Krishna and how that relationship with Krishna is the foundation and understanding of our relationship with all other living beings in all categories of life. Now, here we go. Now, the development of that faith in the process of Krishna, there are three divisions of Krishna conscious men. So as it says in that verse in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the third class are those who have no faith. Even if, that's called the lower grade. Even if they are officially engaged in devotional service, they cannot achieve the highest perfectional service stage. Most likely they will slip after some time. They may be engaged, but because they haven't complete conviction and faith, it's very difficult for them to continue in Krishna consciousness. We have practical experience in discharging our missionary activities as some people come and apply themselves to Krishna consciousness with some hidden motive. As soon as they are economically a little well situated, they give up this process and take to their old ways again. It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna's consciousness. So here again, uh, there are people who come with different motivations as Krishna says in the uh, Bhagavad Gita in the 15th chapter. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, uh, not the 15th chapter. In the 7th chapter, he explains that um, Four types of people come to me. Now, those who are in distress, those who are in need of uh, economic or pecuniary gains, those who are inquisitive, and those who are searching for the absolute truth. Those who come because of distress and those who come because of uh, economic gain, um, their motivation is not devotion to the Lord. Their motivation is to solve their problems materially. But Krishna says that is fine, as they came to the right place. But here it says, unless they develop that conviction and faith through the practice, practice of discharging missionary activities, their hidden motive or their, what you might say, their reason for coming to Krishna consciousness 
will um, take them away from Krishna consciousness. In other words, they may mitigate their distress. They may mitigate their economic situation or increase their economic situation. Once that happens, they felt like they have reached some success and then they go back to their old ways again, as Prabhupada writes. So these are on the lowest grade. They have no faith in the process. They have some faith that by doing, by connecting with God, they can, can increase their material uh, advantages, whether it's relief, freedom from material suffering or some material gain. Here, and then he goes on to say, it is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. As far as the development of faith is concerned, one who is well-versed in literatures of devotional service, can make a note of that, one who is well-versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage of first faith is called a first class Krishna conscious person. So here, this, uh, this knowledge has a, a contributing factor to the principle of faith. That one has knowledge of the scriptures, at the same time engaged in devotional service, they can reach the topmost principle because that knowledge solidifies and fortifies their faith because by having that knowledge, they can understand how things are working and how to adjust in order to get the benefit of devotion service. For instance, when one gets attacked by the illusionary energy, if one doesn't know why one is being attacked or how to overcome that attack, then one will be bewildered and may also fall down. But one who is aware, oh, Maya is attacking like this, and this is what it says in the Shastras. This is what I've heard from my spiritual master. I can apply this knowledge and in order to protect myself or change myself in a way that I will become free from the attack of Maya. So here, where, where scriptural knowledge is being given some emphasis, a big part. And probably first Prabhupada goes to the lowest devotees, then he goes to the highest. Now he's going to the second class. And in the second class are those who are not very advanced in do, understanding devotional service, but automatically have firm faith in Krishna Bhakti or service of Krishna which is the best course, so in good faith they have taken it up. They are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith, but by association and simplicity they are trying to follow. The third class person Krishna consciousness may fall down, but when one is in second class he does not fall down, and for the first class person Krishna consciousness there is no chance of falling down. One in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the results at the end. As far as the third class person is, in Krishna is concerned, although he has faith and he knows that Krishna is very good, devotional service to Krishna is good, he has not yet gained adequate knowledge of Krishna through scripture, like Bhagavatam or Gita. Sometimes these third class persons tend to these to karma and jnana yoga, and they are disturbed as soon as the infection of karma or jnana is vanquished, they become second class or first class persons in Krishna consciousness. So karma yoga means trying to get the results of one's activities in order to benefit one. And uh, the second, jnana yoga means when one is trying to free themselves or from the material suffering. And so um, this faith is divided into three classes, as Prabhupada mentions here, go down the page.
continue to go. And then Prabhupada concludes in the 11th canto, those who have no faith after hearing about Krishna and the excellent devotionals and think that it's simply eulogy, they find this path very difficultly, although they're supposedly engaged in devotional service. For them, there's very little hope of gaining perfection. Thus, faith is very important in the discharge of devotional service. So we see the different uh, levels of faith and how does faith plays out in itself in, in terms of how one approaches the path of devotional service. Um, so second class will not fall down as Prabhupada says, but because they have no knowledge or not enough knowledge, they may have some knowledge. Um, when they're challenged, sometimes on a philosophical level, they cannot defeat or defend their own position. They cannot defeat others' position, nor they can defend their own. But because there is some faith there, they don't go away. They don't go away. But the third class will easily go away when they, when they come in contact with something that is contrary to their understanding. In other words, they can't, they don't have the knowledge of the scriptures, nor do they have faith in the process of devotional service. It's just some preliminary faith that allows them to connect with devotional service. So one has to raise themselves at least to the second platform. And then once one reaches the second class, one should uh, come to the stage of first class. A first class devotee will accept devotional service as the absolute principle in all situations of life and always know that Krishna is, is there guiding, supporting, and protecting the devotee as long as the devotee stays connected in devotional service. Many of, uh, uh, many of us come to Krishna consciousness out of some sentiment. Maybe because we grew up in, in that atmosphere, we have some, some connection with the Vedic culture. And then we come to Krishna consciousness, but we somehow still maintain that sentiment that it's very nice. It brings some kind of peace and happiness but, they don't, but there's not much faith in the execution of the process. And when something becomes difficult in that execution, they lose their enthusiasm for devotional service. They're, they're, we call them fair weather devotees. When everything is nice, it's kijai. When it's everything is not nice, it's goodbye. <laughs> so that's yeah. You know, we don't want to be a fair weather devotee. We want to be a devotee who is who has complete faith that Krishna is the ultimate principle of success, and the process of devotional service is the way to reach Krishna and achieve perfection in life. And which means all of the attributes that come with that, such as happiness, detachment, freedom from suffering, uh, uh, transcendental knowledge, all of these are part of that complete faith. That's the highest platform. So uh, strengthening your faith, and one of the ways to uh, uh, water down your faith or have your faith watered down is wrong or bad association. This is the fast way to go down. When you associate with people who are have no faith in Krishna or the process of devotional service, they have no understanding and they they don't see any benefit in such things, and they also may be very outwardly critical. 
I was just talking to one lady yesterday. Um, she grew up in her spiritual life in, in Christianity in a very good way. But then she came across Krishna consciousness and she felt that she found something more. And she was trying to um, explain to her Christian friends what she had found and how that what they're doing and what she's doing is the same. But all they did was criticize her and pushed her away because they were simply ignorant of what devotional service is or really what even their own path is because those who know their own path well can see that same path in other paths also. In other words, the deeper you go into your own tradition, the more you see those same principles in other traditions. Those who have a superficial understanding of their practice of Krishna consciousness cannot amalgamate differences on the external level and see those differences as ways to separate rather than ways to connect. Okay, so um, if you can study this process of, of faith and how faith works, it's very, very foundational. And as Prabhupada says, very important in the discharge of devotional service. But be careful of your association because this is the way to, uh, what we say, uh, water down your faith or strengthen your faith if you have the right association. Faith is also strengthened in the association of advanced devotees. Okay, we'll stop here. I guess Satyabhama, you've been uh, you've been distributing books so much you lost your voice, huh? Um, Hare Krishna Mataji, sorry, um, we are not able to hear you again. Sorry, Mataji, not able to hear. Um, I guess, I guess you need to take rest. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. technology is never completely in, in line with our desires. Thank you so much, uh, Guru Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Um, yeah, as you said, uh, faith is the main ingredient uh, for devotional service, and uh, um, I and here Shri Prabhupada is um, uh, given has a, a nice uh, description about. Um, the three divisions of uh, Krishna conscious men, um, third class, second class, and first class devotees, and how uh, the faith is uh, uh, different. Um, faith is different for each of these uh, classes of men, um, Krishna conscious um, people. So um, thank you so much. Uh, dear devotees, uh, please go ahead if you have any questions or comments and turn on your cameras. Thank you so much. Sri Devi Mataji, you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you so much, Srimati. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. I was thinking a lot as you were describing these three classes of devotees. And, you know, we often hear that anyone who comes to Krishna consciousness is so rare and has had some connection with Krishna in a previous lifetime. They're picking up where they left off and so on. So it seems really sad that Again, you know, after achieving some material gain or some little something, again, they drift off uh, because of bad association and so on. 
So how can we uh, help devotees who are like, you know, teetering like that on the edge, you know, neither here nor there, not fully convinced, but not practicing properly either. How can we uh, encourage them? <laughs> well, that's an individual. First, you have to know a little bit about them, and then you see how you can apply your encouragement. Um, for instance, the general encouragement is to uh, and, uh, attract them through the activities of devotional service. Hmm. And chanting, taking prasadam, association, uh, we don't have to talk about anything more than the activities and how nice the activities are. Now, uh, sometimes people have, they can't somehow break into devotional service because they think it's like uh, ordinary activities. In other words, you do something and you expect to get a material result. Devotional service is not meant to give us material results, although the re their results do come, but they're not material. They're the expressions of our, of our devotion and they are sanctioned by Krishna. Whatever Krishna wants will happen according to our um, consciousness when we execute devotional service. So the results are not up to us, nor are we meant to enjoy the results either. So people want to rejoin, enjoy the results, and they leave or they don't stay steady when the results do, don't come accordingly. So, um, but the easiest and fast way to get people involved is just engage them in kirtan, taking prasadam, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, allowing them to come to the classes and hearing. Mm -hmm. Basic principles of activities, which are nice. These things give some happiness. Mm -hmm. So nobody's, tur nobody's turning on their cameras today. It's... <laughs> so just keep continuing to encourage them in coming, taking part in kirtan, taking part in uh, associating with devotees, giving them prasadam and encouraging them to ask questions maybe in class like that would be a good way to go. Well, yeah, you have to see. You encourage the person accordingly. You see mm -hmm. how they respond, and then you work accordingly. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're dealing with children. And you have, if you want them to do something, you may have to do it. You might have to use different means to get them to do it. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I can, I can see that we have to have a lot of finesse and delicacy and things like that, which you know is is a tall order for someone like me. So. Thank you for bringing that point out. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Everyone can be attracted in some way. It's up to you to try to find that, that, that inroad. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, um, Guru Maharaj, uh, Satipama Mataji is asking a question. Um, she is asking, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thanks for the wonderful class. I want to ask, how do we know our level of faith on Krishna? How can it be measured? How can our level of faith on Krishna be measured by your enthusiasm in, in devotional service? How enthusiastic you are to execute devotional service. Enthusiasm means how much you, uh, you're fixed on following the instructions of the spiritual master. That is the foundation by which enthusiasm springs. We take the instructions of Krishna and the spiritual master 
and we take it into our heart and we try to execute it in that mood. That, that's the enthusiasm. And then we apply the, the principles for execution. In other words, you do the activity in the best possible way. That's, that's the way to understand. If we're, if we, if we're a little, if we're lackadaisical, we're very fruitive, we'll be up and down in our devotional service. We'll be enthusiastic when things go according to our, our way of thinking, and we'll, we'll lose that enthusiasm when things don't go. That means we're still on the material level and acting out of and acting in the mode of passion yet. But a devotee will stay steady. It doesn't matter. Well, whatever's happened, just stay steady in your devotional service and always keep that enthusiasm, knowing that Krishna is there. <laughs> and he is. He's not a person who guarantees the results, but he does guarantee his mercy coming in different ways. What is that mercy? He inspires you by making arrangements so you can stay fixed in your devotional service. But that arrangement will be understood and accepted by your enthusiasm. You'll be able to see it. When you're not enthusiastic, you can't see Krishna making the arrangements for you. <laughs> He is though, he still does. Enthusiasm, we might transform it or translate it into eagerness to serve. And we get eagerness by Sadhu Sangha. That's how eagerness is inspired. And or in just in general association with devotees. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Gurmaraj, um, there's a follow up from Vrindavan Ram Prabhu. Uh, he's asking many times that enthusiasm is considered as passion by others. How do we deal with that? Well, the enthusiasm and passion are not the same. As Rupa Goswami gives the clear definition of enthusiasm, it means to endeavor with intelligence. Intelligence means in the right direction, according to the instructions of the spiritual master. And the application of the activity, that's what it means. Why am I chanting my rounds? Well, I'm chanting my rounds to purify my heart. I'm chanting my rounds to, uh, to please Krishna. I'm chanting my rounds to please my spiritual master. So these are principles that, that we adopt when we apply our, the activities of devotional service. We can go through the motions in a more mechanical way, but after some time, we'll lose our enthusiasm. We always have to be conscious of what we're doing and why we're doing it. At least check in every once in a while. Because sometimes we get enthusiastic when things go right, and then when things don't go according to how we want it to go, the enthusiasm is dampered, dampened. The devotional service is not dependent on anything material. Simply dependent on our desire to serve Krishna, serve the spiritual master. That's all. That's the only dependence it is. The strength of that desire is the indication of that faith, also, as, as the verse mentioned. Mm -hmm. Prem Kishori, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, Mataji, you can go ahead, please. 
Thank you. Um, Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. How goes to Prabhupada? How goes to you? To your Lotus Feet. Thank you for the very nice class. There are a lot of principles to take away uh, from the class. But my question is pertaining to the application of the principle more than the principle itself, if I may ask. Um, yes. The principle, you define the faith it bases, based on the principle. There is that like faith in the Kanishtha platform, Madhyama platform, and, and the Uttama platform. Uh, but the question I have for the application is that, okay, we are, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a, such an elevated person that I don't have any uh, bodily needs with my family or with, you know, or with the community where I go, even in the temple where I go, I do have a need for the connection with other devotees and sharing and nurturing and be nurtured. But if they, if there is a misunderstanding which springs up, uh, and there is no attempt made to uh, clear the misunderstanding. So can that shake your faith in the community or in your, not so much in the practice because the practice is given by the Acharya. Right. Um, the application of the practice, I don't know how should I say it. Like, okay, do I really belong there after all? Should I look for another temple? Like that kind of a thing. Well, if it's an individual, that's one thing. But if it's something that keeps coming up within that atmosphere, then that's another thing. So um, if you, you, you made the statement that there, the, anomaly, the anomaly is there and there's no opportunity or no uh, success in rectifying it, that's, that's the point, right? First thing you do is try to rectify it. Yeah, but then I'm not in the leadership position, so I cannot go and, uh, you know, I, my voice is very feeble in the big picture. Uh, and well, if that's, that... what, that's what happens. People get marginalized because of that. And they don't give up the, the Sangha or the temple, but they marginalize themselves in, in a lesser role in the activities that they perform. So or they I, may avoid, or they may avoid certain individuals. So, does at a personal level, uh, does that subdue your enthusiasm, like the enthusiasm of the practitioner? That okay, initially we were so wild with the program and so thick with the preaching and so many things, and now we have to, you know, be on the side just because we can't communicate. Is there a no, conflict no. resolution thing? Is there a thing that there's an acceptance that, okay, I do, I'm this and plus I'm also this? It can dampen your, it can dampen your enthusiasm, but it shouldn't dampen your faith in the process. That's, yeah. It, it will, it can water down your enthusiasm in the execution of devotional service. You might marginalize yourself and find that you'll serve in a different way and to, in order to keep yourself connected to service, but you find that you you distance yourself from that situation. The bodies do that all the time. The idea is to hold, have to try to rectify the situation, the atmosphere, and that's up to the authorities in the temple to make sure that these kinds of discourses or disharmonies or whatever goes on in a negative way is removed. The temple has to be an atmosphere where everything is, is moving in their direction towards Krishna and devotional service. If it's not there, it has to be dealt with on a practical level. And that's an administration responsibility. Because as you say, it does affect. It does. There's no question about that. Even if everything is all right with you and there's no ill feeling, still in order not to become victimized again, you marginalize yourself into a, a place where you can do devotional service, but not in the same way. Or in a lesser way, you also. To me personally, if I may share uh, my heart, to me, it sounds more near to impersonalism. Um, I mean, I, of course we do that. Like I've been with this con for 20 years now. I'm, I'm sure everyone who's been with this con for a long time or any 
organization, which is a missionary, have felt that way. I'm sure I've spoken to. If we maybe if we take a poll in this class, <laughs> I think there'd be so many of us in our own God family uh, who have felt like this again and again in many situations. I see Shridhari Mataji backing my statement. But Maharaj, my, my, my confusion is, okay, with time, it, the, the things will clear up. With the time, will clear the things up. I have full faith. But uh, for the time being, it, it makes me feel that there is this impersonalism. If I'm wrong, please correct me. That, you okay. real, you know, not everybody's a pure devotee. <laughs> Nobody is a pure devotee. <laughs> <Everybody's> <laughs> and, a pure... Wherever, wherever. <laughs> Not you, and, and, and therefore, you know, you have to make sure you uh, are able to recognize the, the devotees and how they're practicing on different levels and associate accordingly. You want to associate with pure group, the persons who are more or less on the level of you, where you are, and you can resonate with them. And work together in Krishna consciousness. That's you. What? That's what you look for. Yes, Guru. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know. You know. Sometimes we're there's a hundred people in the temple for a Sunday program. How many can you actually associate with? Well, maybe a few. You could be friendly with maybe everybody. But when it comes to association and interaction, there's not many. So my question was more so from the administration, like the people, the devotees who are on the lead roles for the services. Um, if, if are they so much, it sometimes feels like the service is more important than the devotee. And, and that's not what Chaitanya Chaitamrita teaches. So I'm a little well, bit confused. That's, that's a little bit of our, the history of our movement, which is somehow trying to be rectified now by more opportunities for sangha, sadhu sangha, and at the same time, devotional, what is it, um, we call it, um, um, what is that terminology they use? A Vaishnav care, or what is it? Devotee care. Devotee care, yeah. Devotee care is not just some sentiment, it means whatever devotee needs, and that's all aspects of life, both material and spiritual, for their growth in spiritual life must be provided by the yatra, the temple. But people can't, our temples are not up to that standard, and therefore what happens is people go away. But the temples that are up to that standard, they're flourishing, they're growing, they're attracting more people. Mm -hmm. It's all based on leadership. So, I mean, when, it, when, when the situation is not ideal, you have to choose your association <laughs> accordingly. But there's a guilt trip attached to it that if you can't fit in with the devotees, then where are you going to fit in? So that's like more of a Hare Krishna statement than a human statement to make that if you can't fit in with the association of devotees, then where are you trying to fit in anyway? So it's like, so am I a human being or am I a so Lord? Well, you can always fit into some somewhere, right? <laughs> it's not like you can't fit in anywhere. That's 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 a fact, right? Yes, sir. I mean, we all choose our, you know, unless we until we get, you know, a society of all pure devotees. It's just we're still working out our different anarthas and problems, both on the administration level and on the practical level of devotional interaction, devotee interaction. Yes. Um. Choose your association accordingly <laughs> and work with that. And once you find that, you can be happy. And it's not so much you're worried about what's going on around you so much. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. But it does affect the services you do. Like you have to like just give up. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I can talk from the absolute platform or from the relative platform. From the absolute platform, I can say, just be tolerant, be humble, be service-minded, be free from fault-finding, 
and you know, and then associate and develop the, and, and, and practice those qualities in association. Then it becomes really easy. Yes, good There's no expectations when we develop these qualities. Humility is not about uh, expecting from others. It's about putting ourselves in a position to serve others. Tolerance means to accept whatever happens by way of my, our attempt to serve and accepting it as an opportunity to grow. <laughs> when we center all of the problems that we have around ourselves and not in the organization or in other individuals, we'll grow. <laughs> Yes, Gurmash, that's a nice statement. What does it in me to learn? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um. And humility attracts the attention of God. Yes, Gurmash. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Krishna. If, you humil if a humble person gets criticized, he thinks, thank you. I just learned something about myself that I can grow from. That's a humble person. So we had this discussion one time, if I may share. I'm, I hope I'm not taking one. Uh, Mataji wants to ask you a question, but if I can share one time. I asked this question to one of my friends, Leela Madhuria, one time that, you see, uh, when Bhishma Dev is lying on the bed of arrows, he's it's extremely painful. Like imagine if I'm stitching something and a needle pricks my finger, it's so painful and he's lying on the bed of arrows or Hazas Thakur is beaten up or Prahlad Maharaj is facing so many calamities or Amrish Maharaj is so many, like this, this seems like wonderland stories, right? Uh, but uh, why am I not able to practice that? So she said that because the mind is not controlled, their mind was controlled. My mind is not controlled. So either I... <laughs> That's full control. Yes, good full, full control of the mind. Krishna mentions that in the Gita. When the mind is fully controlled, happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, uh, heat and cold are all, this, all the same. Yes, but for my, for where I am, my material conditioning, it makes me think that honestly, and I want to get rid of it, but that's what I'm revealing. And, and if you resonate with me, please tell me, anyone of the people, the word is here. If somebody is like trying to subdue or not understand, and that's not what it is, but there is like this pillar of imagination about your, or trying to engrave something out of you which really doesn't exist, it makes me feel like you're forced to ask for forgiveness. Please forgive me. You're 100% right about me. I've done this. Please, I folded hands. I beg you, beg forgiveness. But that's artificial, Guru Maharaj. I'm not feeling it. I don't feel like this is so trying to engrave something out of me, which is not there. So how can I ask for forgiveness from artificial? So, and that preaching will be artificial. That faith is artificial. So what do you do? <laughs> anyway, well, well, no, well, yeah, but it, by, by, by doing this, you'll, you'll gain something for sure. <laughs> you'll definitely gain by, by having that attitude. I mean, it's happened to all of us. We get criticized or ridiculed for something that has nothing to do with us, but it's the other person's problem and it's reflected in us. But I want to be with the community. I want to be with that preaching program. That's what, right? But that's my need of connection and belongingness. I'm a social animal. I cannot just, you know, if I'm not going to communicate, if I'm not going to be with them, then I'm going to be with somebody else in the outside world. And that's harmful, more harmful. So choose your Much heart. Kind of a situation. Yeah. So your learning with humility is really about, and tolerance is really about. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the example. I'll give you the example of the ideal when the Sri Vastakur was uh, there was an attempt to destroy his reputation 
by placing worships of items to Durga. But did he complain? Oh, you know, he, it wasn't me. You got me all wrong. You were trying to frame me. He, didn't, he said, now you know what I'm about. <laughs> he simply accepted it. Yes, I remember reading Gopal Chapal. Yeah, Gopal Chapal. And then Krishna dealt with the offender. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Guru. If someone is offending you and you remain humble, Krishna is going to deal with that person. But if you fight back, then he's got two people to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> got the point. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji, for asking such a wonderful questions. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, yes, he sparks good conversation. That's what we need. <laughs> it helps us to go deeper into the principles of, of, because it's all about the qualities of the of a devotee. The devotional service is an expression of those qualities. If the qualities are there are not there, the devotional service is closer to material activity. Nandini Radha Mataji, you want to ask a question? Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So Maharaj, I think my question has been answered, but I'd still like to ask my question. Uh, so it was pretty much the same question, you know, where the conversation finally led into which was that I say that I have complete faith in Krishna and I surrender to Krishna. But when I get into situations where I'm not comfortable, I feel that anxiety. And as much as I want to be surrendered and not worry about things, thinking Krishna is in control, whatever he's going to do for me is the best for me. I still feel that I, I feel that anxiety and I don't feel that I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that 100% surrender. So you're, not, you're not you're not you're not 100 surrendered you have to say krishna help <laughs> krishna save me krishna guide me krishna protect me can we do that yes Maharaj, that's that's yeah. what i want to know that what should i do to be able to achieve that the, level the anxiety comes when we're trying to solve the problem and we can't when we give it to when we take shelter of Krishna, then that anxiety is gone and we leave it up to him to guide us. And he's there. He's there. Depending on how sincere we are, he's there. But if we don't, if we just our our anxiety is simply, oh, I'm caught in this situation. What do I do? What do I do? The situation is bigger than you. So you need something better than yourself to, start to help you get through that situation or help you see clear how that situation is something different than what you actually are experiencing. Maybe beneficial. <laughs> Most of the time it is. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. <laughs> I think you agreed too soon. You got to argue with me a little bit more. <laughs> well, I think for me, the only problem is that whenever I am in a situation and I get anxious about something, I get stuck with the outcome because I, I wanted an outcome, specific outcome, and I'm not getting that outcome. And in those situations, I need, I want to be able to surrender more. But I, am, I, I just can't because I'm always stuck on the outcome I want from that situation. That, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. Um, if you're with other persons and you're in that situation, then you can always turn to them for help, advice. If you're alone, then you have to somehow or other just depend on Krishna. Krishna works through our, through, through our consciousness. He actually tells us 
how to act, or he actually arranges a situation for you to see what you need to do or how you need to respond to the situation. But in all cases, no one can harm you unless you harm yourself. No one can hurt you unless you hurt yourself. Yes, yes, Maharaj, the problem is the mind, that the mind is not in control. And it's my own mind, which is either harming or, you know, making me distressed. But how to have, you know, how to conquer my own mind, I don't know. Yeah, it's a process. It's not like it's an over, overnight program. Uh, conquering the mind is two things, as Krishna explains that to Arjun. Uh, constant practice and controlling the mind and detachment from everything that is, that is contrary. Without that detachment there, then we're attached to, to things that will keep the mind from being uncontrolled, will, being, will keep the mind from being controlled. We have to detach our, ourselves from material activities or the results of material activities. We can't make things happen, but we can inspire the mercy of the Lord to descend in every activity we, we perform. And that mercy makes everything nice. Even if it doesn't come out according to the way we want it, simply by accepting the Lord's mercy, we become satisfied. Krishna says, you're not the doer. Kartaham viti manyate. Prakriti kriyamanani, vuni karma sarvasya, ahankara, vimudatna, kartaham viti manyate. Uh, uh, ahankara, false ego, is the driving force that makes us think we are the doer and we are the enjoyer. We're not. We're simply an instrument. We can be an instrument for our false ego or an instrument for Krishna. That's all. But practicing mind control means learning how to detach ourselves from the results of activities. They say serve for the sake of service. Find, find the happiness in the activity and not so much in the results. Thanks, Maharaj, but it's 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 hard. I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> because because Chanchala Himana Krishna Pramati Balavadra Katyaham, you know, the mind is, is restless. It's turbulent, stubborn, and unsteady. And Krishna Arjuna said to control the mind is like trying to control the wind. So practice, Prabhupada said, practice, practice, practice. And in the process of practicing, be reflective on how you did. Give yourself a little grade. Did I pass the test completely or did I partially pass the test? Be a little bit you know, evaluating your, your situation. How did I do? You know, we catch ourselves doing wrong things when we have the experience of what is right and what is wrong. Like yesterday, I was speaking something. I was speaking to someone, giving some instructions, but the person I was giving instructions was not so much interested in hearing my instructions. <laughs> it wasn't about him. 
it was about a situation that was outside of him, but that he had jurisdiction over. And so uh, after I realized there was no sense of me pushing it any further, I, then I realized, okay, I did my bit, I tried. <laughs> It was outside of both of us, but it was affecting, you know, the devotional atmosphere. I felt so. So what can I do? Well, you know, I just did my best. <laughs> and if you want a little. You know, what a little uh, aphorism you can meditate on. Uh, you know, meditate on this. You ready? <laughs> okay. Act like it depends on you. And no, it doesn't. Act like it depends on you. That means you put your full attention, enthusiasm, and whatever else is needed, but at the same time, you should know it doesn't depend on you. Now that's two con contrary statements, but if you can amalgamate them together, you've got your Krishna, you can make, you can understand Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Krishna is just waiting for us to stop trying, that's all, so he can do it. <laughs> but he, we won't give him the chance to do it. That's the problem. So when we finally say, I can't do it, then all of a sudden everything works. <laughs> Right, Sachi Baba, when you're distributing books, if you don't have that mood, you can't you can't stay out there. But that applies to everything we do. But don't get discouraged. Failure is the, is the uh, feature of learning where we can become successful the next time. Learn from your failures and move forward, that's all. Don't consider a failure a failure. Consider a failure an opportunity to learn. Right? We try something, it doesn't come out the exact way. We see where we failed and we try to, you know, correct it and work with it in a better way next time. The person who created the uh, sewing machine. His name was Singer. I think it was Mr. Singer. He couldn't figure out how to put the, the hole in the needle and connect it to the machine. And he tried so many different ways, he kept failing. But he never gave up. Finally, one night when he went to sleep, because the desire was so strong, in the dream, he got the, he got the answer. And then the next day he applied it. Uh, who else? There's one person, the person who started um, uh, WhatsApp. He failed tremendously before in so many ways. And when he finally got it right, <laughs> he became a, you know, a multimillionaire. So failure is epitome is the principle where success is eventual. Don't ever give up. <laughs> but then you have to learn from your mistakes and apply the, the positive understanding in a more 
um, in a more conscious way. You can't fail in this process. It's not possible. You can only give up. That's the only thing. You can't, you can't fail and you can only give up. So failure means giving up. That's all. But if you don't give up, you, you'll make it back to God. <laughs> Not only you like a good fight, right? You like to fight. So you have to fight against your that false ego, not fight so much on the external level. <laughs> So devotees are fighters, they're fighting for truth, they're fighting for Krishna. Absolutely, Maharaj. You know, with your blessings, I'll be able to fight even more, uh, you know, and be, be, be determined. Uh, again, we always remember that uh, failure is a pillar, is the uh, principle by which success is coming. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't give up. <laughs> but in the process of failing is also the process of learning. If we don't learn from the failures, then, then we'll continue to fail. Yes, Maharaj, absolutely. I like that word, absolutely. <laughs> it's, be it's better than yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely means there's no, there's no other consideration. <laughs> like Lord Chaitanya says, Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Harir Nam. Deva kevalom, kalom nas, deva nas, deva nas, deva. That's an absolute principle. When he says it three times, it becomes absolute. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, wonderful answer. Um, Vrindavanath Prabhu, you want to ask any question? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, <clears throat> Guru Maharaj, this is like English New Year calendar time, and everybody is working on new resolutions, new. Uh, a way to increase their sadhana and devotional service. But is there anything, uh, of course, we need to focus more and more uh, in uh, guru and uh, devotee's uh, service. But is there any other suggestions or instructions from your end, like where we need to be engaged in this new year? Yeah, make a commitment. Make a spiritual commitment and follow the commitment. Mm -hmm. Something you can commit yourself to, to follow and then renew that commitment every day. <laughs> you know, when we take initiation, we commit ourselves to to following four regular to principles and chanting the six, 16 rounds of the holy name. But that's that's a foundational commitment, which is the basis of everything we do. But then again, there are other commitments that when we when we observe our own devotional service, like for instance. We're chanting and we're recognizing we're not attentive in our chanting. 
So at that point, we make a, a firm commitment, I'm going to chant attentively. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to chant attentively. And so that commitment there, and then you remember, oh, this is what I've made. So you focus on that. That's called Eka, Eka Vrata. Eka means one or one pointed. So you make a commitment to uh, chant attentively or make a commitment to every day read and study Prabhupada's books. Make a commitment to distribute one Bhagavad Gita every day. Baba tells the story of uh, one very rich family in India. Um, and the mother, she was a senior of the whole family. So she instituted a rule for all the family members. It was a big family, joint family. Everyone has to come and see the deity every day in the morning before they... Uh, before they begin their daily activities. So there was a family deity there. And so there were many family members, brothers with family members, and sons and daughters. And she imposed the fine if they didn't come. <clears throat> so the fine was they had to pay 500 rupees if they missed the day. That was the fine. So she forced a commitment <laughs> by composing a fine. And so you can also do that, make yourself a commitment and then fine yourself if you don't do it. <laughs> like, uh, for instance, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, more well, would be a, <clears throat> Prabhupada, Prabhupada, in telling that story, he said, <clears throat> he also suggested, he said, we're going to make, we're going to follow that, and that if you miss Mangalarti, you have to pay a fine, <laughs> Prabhupada said. And the fine was you have to distribute one Krishna book that day. So that helps you become more, if you put a little punishment attached to your commitment, <laughs> that if I don't do this, then I have to pay this fine or I have to make some, I have to do some denial. Is that all right? Yes, thank you Guru Maharaj. It's really, really helpful and very pragmatic. So thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. So you might say, all right, <clears throat> for my fine with my wife, she makes my favorite dinner. I, I won't eat that favorite prep today because uh, I didn't I didn't fulfill my commitment. There's your fine. Or I might have to fast that day, or the I might have to fast for one meal. Or I might have to chant extra rounds. That's another way to, to punish yourself. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Absolutely. <laughs> that's just an incentive. The idea is to make a commitment and keep it. I think for a few days I would have to live. Uh, I would have to stay hungry, but that's fine. <laughs> because I know where do I stand? <laughs> that's a good way to improve. Well, you won't get away with it for long because your wife will think nobody's eating when I'm cooking. So I have to make sure my husband fulfills his commitment so I can cook and he can eat. 
<laughs> you get encouragement. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But commitment, yeah, that's 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 what we should be doing, making some commitment. Small or big, that's that doesn't matter, but something. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. We'll try to definitely follow. And as Mataji said, absolutely we'll try. So <laughs> it's a very, very pragmatic and very important instruction. Thank you. Everything is easy when you depend on Krishna. Everything is hard when you don't depend on Krishna. Becoming dependent on Krishna is the conscious mindset that we need that we need to develop that every moment we're dependent on Krishna. That's true, Guru Maharaj. And I have seen my personal uh, experience also that. When I'm not able to do something, I feel like every moment is given by Krishna. So how come I can think that I cannot do something like this? So that really inspires and gives the motivation, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, depending on Krishna is, is the foundation for for peace of mind and, and uh, detachment from everything. It's like we preach and we want people to accept and we want people to grow, but it just doesn't happen sometimes. So it doesn't mean we give up preaching. It's just, it just means that we just have to be detached from the fact that it doesn't always come out. Okay, is there uh, any other questions, comments? It looks like we ran out. Sri Devi Mataji, you want to? Great, Kishori, how's, how's Harry Das Thakur doing? Yes, Garanj, we are happily <laughs> situated. Yes, Garanj, thank you so much. Um, like regular worship? Yes. Uh, when I'm home, I'm able to do two, three offerings a day, but I'm, when I'm not home, at least one offering goes. That's uh, nice. Yes. Thank you. You feel, your, you feel your chanting improving? Yes, somehow it is. Somehow I'm more attached to my chanting beads now. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's what his presence will do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Krishna. Kurma sent me Haridas Thakur from Hungary. <laughs> After I served his GD, um, his Haridas Thakur here, he sent me one. So thank you. Well, he was so happy at your house that he came back. That's that's the whole thing. <laughs> he came thank for you. a visit. He came for a visit and then he decided to stay. I don't know. Only in your association there is so much acceptance and affection but everywhere else there is so much rejection but thank you <laughs> thank you very much for finding something good thank you. <laughs> uh, it's a have in bhakti yoga only because of guru maharaj's love his affection his constant care and concern i would not be here today if it were not for my guru maharaj You would probably be better off. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I'd be six feet under the ground or in the Luthi Asylum. <laughs> six feet above the ground, maybe. 
<laughs> you had a question. Yes, I did have a question. And the question is this, you know, you said depending on Krishna every moment, and we understand that Krishna is in control of everything, everything, minutely. He's completely in control. He's a controller of everything. So when something happens all of a sudden out of the blue, like an illness or an accident or some sudden, uh, you know, misfortune, and you cannot do your service, what is the lesson you're supposed to learn from that? Well, when you say you have to understand the principle of Krishna's complete control, and there's two aspects to it, and that's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the 13th chapter. Krishna is the, he is the uh, permitter and the force behind all activities. There's things he wants to happen and things he allows to happen. Well, then you have to understand. Usually when it comes to material things, he just allows them. He allows the material energy to work accordingly. He puts the material energy in place and it works accordingly. He doesn't interfere with the activities of material energy. But he teaches us how to deal with the material energy so we don't become victimized with it. And the way to protect ourselves from the material energy is to take shelter of him. Otherwise, the three modes of material nature are powerful and they're going to work according to their characteristics. You can't play around with the material energy and expect, while well, Krishna is in control, I'm okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> the material energy is not like that. It'll, it'll work. <clears throat> the, the, gov the government makes the laws and says, you follow the laws. If people don't follow the laws, then they get punished. It's not the government's fault they get punished. He, he, they set the laws, that's all. So Krishna puts everything in place and he works in a certain way and you have to abide by his instructions and guidance. And when you get to a situation where you, you know, it becomes overwhelming, you take shelter of Krishna. And then you're free from that and that that, that effect. But if you don't, don't take shelter, then you're victimized by the by the workings of the modes of material nature. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Just remember Krishna, that's all. It's easy. <laughs> Out of all of the scriptural injunctions and discussions and philosophies, there one verse from the, from the Mahabharata, which is placed in this Chaitanya Charitamrita, that uh, I forget, I, I know, I know Vrindavan Nath knows this verse. I can't remember how it goes, but there are only two principles, always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. You know that verse? From the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I, I think I heard you quote it once before. That's why I, um, I can't remember the sense. If, therefore, Krishna consciousness is relegated to two things always remember Krishna and don't forget Krishna. All the rules and regulations and everything fits into that these two principles. It's uh, okay, maybe we can look it up. It's from, uh, it's in chapter 20. Mm, I think it's in the same chapter now that we're in. 22 verse number 113, I think it is. Is that it? 22, 113. Yes, Guru Mahārāj, 22, 113. Yeah. So you can go to that. Yes, Mark Vishnu or Vishnu Mark Nanat Chit. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu, 
he should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be servants of these two principles. Mm -hmm. And then Prabhupada elaborates on that point. <clears throat> he says, whatever you do, remember Krishna. Whatever you do, don't forget Krishna. And Prabhupada mentions all the different, some different activities that one performs, and in that way, one is remembering Krishna. And he says, one must refrain from doing things that make one forget Krishna. These two principles form the basic background of Krishna consciousness. That's the easy formula. <laughs> remember Krishna. That's all. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope Sri Devi Mataji you got the answer. Thank you so much. Um, Guru Maharaj, we are almost uh, at the one and a half hour mark uh, today. So uh, I guess. Uh, and devotees, you have any more questions or comments? Well, thank you. And we'll see you all tomorrow. You can read ahead in the chapter. It's, it's really quite interesting chapter. Yes, good match. Thank you so much for the wonderful class and nice question and answer session today. And uh, learn a lot of important points today. Thank you so much. Good Thanks night. to devotees. It stimulated some discussion because discussion brings us to to higher levels of understanding and more subtle points that come out in these discussions, which really help us see the whole a larger picture. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Shira thank you. Hare Krishna. Srimati Mataji, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Your mercy is unfathomable on all of us. We are so grateful to you. I mean, it's un, 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 unfounded. You can't find it anywhere. It's not foundable. Unfoundable. That's what it is. You said unfoundable? Not, not. <laughs> it's founded on wonderful principles of bhakti yoga. That's what it's founded on. Very solid, very safe, very secure. And your lotus feet is all that we cling to. <laughs> <Some foundation. laughs> Well, if I believe you, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but thank you anyway. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.